So there's this concept that I'd heard about a couple years ago that was a little bit too new agey for me. And at the time, I kind of poo-pooed it and thought it wasn't really going to be something that effective in my life. But a few years later, now I've experimented with it again, and I've changed it, and it's been the most effective thing I've ever found for feeling better right now. And I want to share that in today's video. Hey guys, Alex Hine, author of the health book, Master the Day. So I've included a free download down there below. It's four Taoist habits you can use to live past 100. And it's based on this historical case study of a man named Li Qingyun, who supposedly lived to be way over 100. Regardless of whether or not he did, those four habits in that link down there below, I think can really, really help you. Now this idea that I stumbled upon was from two different authors. The first was Abraham Hicks, and the second was David Hawkins, MD. Now basically what they were both talking about was that there's this idea of an emotional spectrum. So they say things like energetic, they say vibrational, they say consciousness spectrum. But the way I think about it, just in plain layman's terms, is that it's just a spectrum of emotions. And what emotions make you feel good and help you take action in life? And what emotions make you feel bad? and make you disabled or inactive in life. So for example, when you look at the Abraham Hicks spectrum, here are a few examples that they give. They'll say, for example, that the lowest level, level 19, is fear and powerlessness. They'll say level 15 is associated with anger. Level 13 is associated with worry and anxiety. Level eight is associated with boredom. Level three is associated with excitement and happiness. And then the highest level, level one, is associated with love, joy, and just the highest states of consciousness, and really where synchronicities and these kind of mystical states that physicians throughout history and mystics have talked about. So the way I think about these levels are purely that they are emotional and conscious states of being, meaning when you're in the lowest fear and powerlessness, you feel the worst and you tend to do the least in your life. When you're at the highest, you feel the best, and you tend to perform the best. Now, the second thing that's really important about these states is to recognize that the highest states here are associated with the greatest level of physiological healing. The more of your day you are in those states, the greater your physiology is in a place where it's healing and where it's in parasympathetic and it's resting and it's in the ideal state just to get better and to feel well and to heal faster. That's really, really important for this video. Another thing is that typically, if you think back to the best days of your life, the best date you were ever on, the best day at work you ever had, the best time with your friends or with your family or on vacation, you were usually in those highest states of passion. Now, the thing that really impacted me when I started changing the way I approach this exercise was rather than trying to just force myself into some higher state of consciousness by being a mystic or a sage, I tried to come up with practical ways. So for example, I listed out that same spectrum again, but this time for each of the levels, I listed out an actual habit or activity I could do that historically has put me in that state. So I know, for example, at the very lowest states, fear and anxiety and powerlessness, it's like working on an insurmountable challenge or doing a tough business task, or doing a job I hate. And at the highest level, I know that dating a girl I'm in love with, having a couple beers with some friends, or just going on a vacation with people I love, put me in that highest state of excitement, and healing, and rest, and consciousness. So I'll give you a few more examples for these intermediate states. For level 19, the lowest state, according to Abraham Hicks, this fear and powerlessness, I wrote down that working on business tasks having a day job back in the day, being alone for too many days in a row, or overspending put me in this negative state of fear and I don't know, is it going to work out? Is it going to be okay? The next one, level 15, which was anger, was typically business-related tasks for me, exhausting myself by overscheduling or being around people I don't like. Level 13, worry, the main activities that put me in that state were working too many hours, not sleeping enough, or watching news. Level eight, boredom. What put me in that state was watching Netflix, being alone for too long, or working on business projects that I wasn't really passionate about. The next level, level three, which was excitement and which was passion, the main activities that put me in that state were seeing my patients, studying medicine, working on inspired ideas, and going to salsa and bachata class. And then finally, that highest state, level one, 
What put me in that state of joy and love and passion and appreciation was time with friends and family laughing, dating a great girl or having fun, and playing with a dog. (laughs) So if you are in some of those lower states, whether it is you're just trying to heal, you're just trying to feel well during difficult times, or it is you just want to have a greater level of wellness and performance in your life like I constantly do. For me, the way to use these practically is to not to force yourself into a higher state. If you can do that, great. But instead, try to do more activities that will put you in that highest, most elevated state and you'll naturally begin to feel better. So that's the activity that really, really helped me, and it really, really changed my life. It's now something I know that if I'm in like anger and agitation, I just pick one activity at the middle level. Even boredom, going for a walk, is still higher than anger and agitation. And I use that almost as like this little ladder of my emotions, and I can figure out something that'll make me feel better. And I also know that's aligned with greater healing if there is something going on with me. Now, I hope that helps. Again, Check out that free guide down there below. It's Li Ching Yun's Four Taoist Habits to Help You Live to 100. It's a case study of this famous man's life and the Taoist practices he did to live that long. It's the first link in the description. And then I have two related videos on this exact topic right over here.